Li Bai and Du Fu. A graphical comparison. Who was Li Bai? Li Bai, also known by the names Li Bo, Li Po, and Li Pai, as well as a few others, was a poet who lived from 701 to 762 during the Tang Dynasty. In the year 725, when Li Bai was in his early 20s, he left his home in the Sichuan province and began his travels around the Chinese mainland. Here, journeying remains the way of life for Li Bai, with the only exception being a brief period spent at the Hanlin Academy. After being dismissed from the Hanlin Academy for an unknown indiscretion, he returned to traveling the world in writing, this time accompanied by Du Fu. However, in 762, the poet died from suspected mercury poisoning, though it is more fitting of his character to believe in the traditional folklore that tells of the carefree Li Bai drowning in the river after trying to catch the reflection of the moon. Who was Du Fu? Du Fu, living from 712 to 770, was another poet of the Tang Dynasty. Unlike Li Bai, Du Fu grew up the son of a scholar official and a noble. As such, he was educated to become a civil servant, a background that was often influenced by the study of Confucianism. He too was a traveler, though had a bit more focus than Li Bai's meandering. After taking a break in Chang'an to take the civil service exam unsuccessfully in 735, he once again returned to traveling the Chinese mainland. When his father died in 740, Du Fu gave up his father's rank to continue his life as a traveling poet. Not too long after, he joins the now famous Li Bai for a short while, gaining much inspiration and admiration, as is seen by his numerous poems about his friend. He later ended up being appointed to a minor civil service position, though war caused him some troubles. Towards the end of his life, he started the journey back to his birthplace. Though he never completed the journey due to breaks for his declining health, he wrote hundreds of poems along the way, ultimately dying in 770 at 59 years old. Before I can quite get into the poetry of Li Bai and Du Fu, I should first tell you about the Tang Dynasty as a whole. Lasting from 618 to 907, the Tang Dynasty is often considered the golden age of Chinese art and literature, as well as of innovation. As the arts flourished, inventions such as printing allowed the further dissemination of both artistic literature and religious texts to reach many more people, making even greater cultural advancement. Its reach in Chinese culture is still found today, as almost every Chinese household is expected to contain at least one book of Tang poetry. Tang Dynasty poetry is generally considered to have existed within a few fairly strict set of norms, these being a limited number of lines, a strong connection to religion, and generally containing topics limited to people's everyday lives. These topics could include, but were not limited to, Chinese culture, emotions, loss, friendship, nostalgia, and of course, the many joys of life. This era was also made up of vast descriptions of nature's beauty, with almost every poet using such imagery. And now, as far as my project goes, a graphic representation in Gavi. For the basis of my project, I created a model that took corpora of both Li Bai and Du Fu, the two great poets of the Tang Dynasty, and compared their reoccurring topics and themes. From this, I was able to clearly generate a model in Gefi centered around two nodes being Du Fu and Li Bai. In between them, you see themes that they shared, and on opposing sides, you see themes that were generally held to either Li Bai or Du Fu. Li Bai's Poetry Li Bai had a number of distinct themes and features that marked him apart from other poets of the Tang Dynasty, and specifically Du Fu. Some of these markers included his heavy use of vibrant colors, a constant reference to what I refer to as the intangibles, and a consistent use of fanciful imagery and heavy description for artistic value, often even crossing into the form of personification of the elements of nature he touched upon. With regards to his usage of vibrant colors, whenever Li Bai is describing scenery, he simply refused to just mention it. These elements of nature were never just the sky, but were instead the blue sky, grasses blue as jade, green water, green mosses, and yellow clouds. This trend is ever so prevalent in his work because he refuses to not embellish any of the imagery which he's encountered on his journey. He maintains this fanciful, incredible, glorified discussion of his scenery. Going back to what I was mentioning earlier, Li Bai loves this use of the intangibles. As you can see in the model, song, wind, heaven, shadow, night, moon, sky, and cloud, these aren't things that are just simply existing along the earthly plane that you find. They're above, they're hidden behind things, they're 
concepts rather than simple objects that you point out. During Li Bai's works as a whole, you don't see him consistently focus on images that are this simple in nature, unless they've been highly embellished. Instead, he favors these grand intangibles. So while you'll see that nature was an overarching theme of the Tang poetry, the other Tang poets, as you'll soon see with Du Fu, weren't focused on these otherworldly bodies as Li Bai makes them out to be. And if they were, it wasn't nearly to the same extent. Building straight off of that goes right back to Li Bai and his consistent use of these artistic and fanciful imagery. So when he discusses his nature, it's high and bright and deep, and while all simple, the, the reoccurrence of these terms exemplifies the consistency of his embellishment or his glorification. The reoccurrence there just is pointing out that these terms aren't just ascribed to him. The images aren't just there. It's a grand feeling every sense that he's looking at them. So whereas other Tang Dynasty poets would note a mountain passing as they walk through it on their journeys, Li Bai exclaims, Oh high mountain, how I long to reach you. It's moments like these and many other recurrences that just demonstrate a genuine appreciation and fascination with nature. While it should be taken into account that Li Bai was often in a drunken state when he was writing his poetry, there is no need to see this as only because of his drunken state, as these themes continue beyond all of his poetry. It's not just exempt to a few hand-picked poems here and there, which are theorized to have been written in a drunken state. And now on to the poetry of Du Fu. Throughout the works of Du Fu, you see a few themes appear more prevalently than others, these being the simple mention of nature, the passing of time, and the qualifying of things with numbers. On the whole, you'll see that Du Fu uses significantly simpler diction when he discusses nature. Though a common theme of the Tang, these two poets employ nature almost entirely in oppositional ways. Whereas Li Bai is grand and glorious, Du Fu is simple and often bearing a sorrowful or somber tone. In some parts he writes, Tomorrow we will be separated by the peaks of mountains. Or, Now she lives as grass and trees. Other times he'll use it as even simpler and just as a directive, East of the mountains. Here you can see that Du Fu just doesn't express the same reverence for nature as that you can find throughout the corpus of Li Bai. Though not implying that he doesn't appreciate nature as much, it just comes off in a more natural and observant, straightforward tone. Just one that you wouldn't find in Li Bai. That brings us to the next theme of passing time. Here you can see old, return, time, white. These are all words and topics used to describe his experiences and observations around the passing of time and how old age is quickly coming to both him and the world. In one of his poems, he directly mentions Li Bai and writes to him, it's time to return now that your hair is white. Though in typical Li Bai fashion, he didn't. The examples continue. He writes once that, granted, I am gray and old. He writes again, that a returning bird loves its old branches. And in one of his most somber poems, he writes, Oh, mother dear, how short we live, how long we die. Over and over again, Du Fu uses the passing of time to show his longing to continue observing and traveling, but also his recognition that the world must maintain balance in the form of old life dying off for new life to inhabit the earth. The third of major themes that I found in Du Fu was the quantifying of things with numbers. Examples range from A letter from home was worth 10,000 pieces of gold to But my friend in wine gone 10 days drinking. Another major example being 10,000 oxen might turn their heads inquiringly. While this quality appears constantly in the works of Du Fu, you barely see it at all in the works of Li Bai. Du Fu quantifies events that happen with set numbers and finite understandings, where Li Bai would likely not have specified how long he was drinking, or he might have used a concept such as unending to express the amount of gold a letter from home was worth, or how many oxen there were turning their heads. This really pushes the theme of Du Fu expressing things with much more objectivity and a matter-of-fact tone, a tone that you wouldn't find with Li Bai, where you'd see something such as hope, or optimism, or really any other abstract concept that wasn't simple and straightforward. While I may have just spent the past nine minutes discussing the differences between Li Bai and Du Fu, it's important to acknowledge their similarities, because there is, of course, a middle section. While they may go about it in a different manner and using different tones, they both utilized nature imagery that was so prevalent during the Tang Dynasty. One of my favorite nodes on this entire graph exists purely on Du Fu's side. However, I found it actually appears quite frequently within the works of Li Bai. This would be the node Alon. While this is clearly meant to be alone and just stemmed incorrectly, it sits only on Du Fu, 
which I find really fascinating, as one of the most common topics I found when reading Levi was the idea of feeling alone and solitude. However, Levi goes about it through his imagery and through his discussion of nature rather than by direct mention of the idea of being alone or solitude. Take, for example, his poem, Drinking Alone Under the Moon, which reads, Among the blossoms waits a jug of wine. I pour myself a drink, no loved one near. Raising my cup, I invite the bright moon and turn to my shadow. We are now three, but the moon doesn't understand drinking, and my shadow follows my body like a slave. While this poem doesn't directly mention alone or solitude once, it clearly uses the imagery and the tone to declare it. This could possibly point out one of the main faults of my work, being that I only focus on direct mention of topics and ideas, whereas I need to be able to focus on images and thoughts and feelings and motives that permeate the work. This brings us to the question of how Li Bai and Du Fu fit into the Tang Dynasty. To start, they both discuss nature in such different ways. Li Bai through his fanciful and glorious view, looking up the moon and the heavens, and Du Fu through his straightforward and tangible. They are both filled with religious influence, as these poets represented two of the major key religions of the time. Li Bai is almost entirely driven by the principles of Taoism through his experience as a journeyman and a traveler, and through his personal observations of the natural world and its beauty whereas Du Fu is much more aligned with Confucian thought through his commentary on humane morals, as well as his focused observations of the living world rather than the natural world. However, there do still linger some Taoist thoughts within the works, but these likely originate from his time spent with Li Bai. In understanding both Li Bai and Du Fu, and how they compare to themselves, as well as to other poets of the Tang Dynasty, one can gain a true understanding of why the Tang Dynasty is so influential to modern-day China and modern-day literature as well. It truly was a golden age filled with grand cultural advancement, and it certainly is a period which I will look to in the future. Thank you.